Good morning. Welcome to Lift at Home Worship. We are thrilled that you all are here with us today, and I pray that you will be blessed as we continue to worship God together. You can lift your hands, sing along if you'd like, um, open your Bibles or get your, your smartphones out to get the Bible apps pulled up. But whatever you do, know that we are thrilled to be worshiping together. And we look forward to the day, which will be soon, where we'll be able to come together and physically and safely worship together again at 3015. So for all of you who are first time guests, I pray that you will be blessed. And for those of you that returned again, thank you so much for lifting with us. Happy Sunday, Lift Church. Thank y'all so much for joining us for another Lift Live. Um, I hope you're excited about this morning's service, and we are so happy that y'all are here. So please feel free to join in and worship with us. Thank you. 
morning, listen. I am so grateful that y'all are here with us this morning, uh, worshiping with us online. We decided to do something a little different today. This is still considered worship, but I've realized something that when I preach or when I teach, that's just a one-way street. Yes, I've had time to pray and to hear from God and to uh, trust that what I'm sharing with you is what you need for your life. But what I also realize is that there might be times when you walk away from listening to what has been said and still have some questions that are unanswered. Maybe it's questions about faith, or maybe it's questions about uh, your relationship with God, or maybe it's questions about relationship with others, or uh, about parenting or marriage. And I think that the church should be a place where you can safely ask questions. So. I want to start by asking Pastor Gary a question that came in, and you might be wondering this question yourself, but maybe uh, you were too afraid to ask it. I'm not sure, but here's here's what this, this person wrote. Why is it harder to believe than not to believe? So I'm assuming this person also means like in God. Why yeah. is it harder to believe uh, God or believe what God says in the scriptures than right. not to believe. Yeah. So when I when I heard that question, what I think of is that it's easier not to believe. Um, I think because of the culture that we live in right now, mm -hmm. um, it's uh, going to church, um, expressing your faith, are not things that are necessarily highly prized. Okay. Right. So. Um, I, I think it's just it's easier not to believe because like people don't get up and go to church on Sunday mornings like they used to. You know, when it was a culturally uh, appropriate thing to, to get up and go to church and be involved in church. Um, and that had its own issues. Right. Sure. But um, uh, when people had to do it because it was the it was the cultural thing to do instead of they did it out of a desire to know God mm -hmm. and be in relationship with God, um, then, you know, that had its own issues. Um, but I, I, so I think it's easier not to believe just because our culture People doesn't. exposed to it. Yeah, our culture doesn't make it necessarily easy hmm. to believe, right? And and so, and unfortunately, some Christians, you know, they they like to to spout what they think they believe, and and it can be more harmful mm. than good, mm -hmm. right? So that turns people off. Yeah. Um. So um. So yeah, I think it is harder to believe in that. You have to make an effort. Uh, you have to be. To, to be disciplined like an athlete, mm -hmm. um, you know, an athlete can't uh, just can't run a, a marathon unless mm -hmm. they've practiced right and prepared right. for that. Right. Uh, it's the same thing in, in faith. You know, we we have to be disciplined about reading our Bibles on a regular basis, hopefully daily, and and praying on a regular basis, and develop that relationship with God. Uh, uh, and so, in that respect, it is harder to believe, right? Because you it, it it's an effort. To put in, you have to put an effort into that relationship to make it last, to make it work, mm -hmm. uh, and to, to grow. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yeah, me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, the next question, and I really like this one. What are some of the questions that, uh, that you ask couples in premarital counseling, hmm. and why are they important? Th that's a really good question. Um I don't necessarily just have a list of questions. I do, but what I've done is over the years, because I've gotten the chance to meet with hundreds of couples now, um, we break it up into four main categories that I have found have been really helpful for um, couples to ha have as tools in their tool belt as they are journeying into this new chapter of their life called marriage. And so we look at communication, that's really important for people to know how to communicate one another and to discuss that and to know what is your communication styles. Uh, are you a good listener? Um, God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. And so how do you communicate with one another and is it helpful? Um, and if not, then we work through that. We also look at intimacy, which we understand that's not just sexual intimacy, but intimacy is a is a plethora of things that goes into making a relationship special. So we discuss that. And if there are any red flags or any information that folk, the couple should know, right? Because sometimes people, believe it or not, they don't discuss everything before they say, I do. And so this gives people an opportunity to come and be honest and open. And it's a safe opportunity and chance for me as the pastor to, to 
feel comfortable that this couple is ready to be united in marriage, but also for them to know, right? Wouldn't you want to know if somebody has an STD? <laughs> I think premarital counseling is the time to hear that, if not before <laughs> that. But um, so we, we talk about that. We talk about uh, finances because that's really important. You, you need to know uh, how will you live your lives together with money? Will you share savings accounts and checkings accounts? Will you have your own? Will we have joint dreams that we'll work towards financially? Do you have debt? Do we use budgets? So those are some of the things we talk about in that section. And then we also talk about uh, families and friends because we understand that the couples are coming together. Their lives are coming together to create a new one, right? So if they're planning on having children, if they're bringing children into the marriage, uh, what does blended families look like? What will it be to be new parents? Um, how do you have new boundaries with your own parents if they are still alive and, and or, or friends that are you're bringing into the relationship or siblings or you name it. So we look at a, at the, the areas that I found or believe uh, affects divorces the most, right? When you ask folk why they got a divorce, it's going to be one of those four uh, subjects generally, mm -hmm. typically, right? Somebody cheated on someone physically, that's a intimacy issue. Uh, there maybe have been a financial issue um, or maybe there was a situation with family and friends. It, it, I feel like those are the categories that uh, are generally really helpful for for uh, couples to work through. And we look at uh, books and we have assessments and there's lots of different techniques that I use when working with couples prior to, to marriage. Because my goal which is what one of the things I want y'all to know is my goal is not just that people have a lovely wedding day. I mean, that's nice and that's great, but my goal is that you have an amazing marriage, mm -hmm. that your marriage is one that will uh, survive the test of time, that, that God will be in it and a part of it as you make this covenant with this, this new person, this person in your life. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I have another question for you, Gary, right. though. Let's see here. One of the questions that came that I think is really cool is, oh, what do you think is the coolest story in the Bible? Do you, is there one for you? That's hard because there's so many great stories in the Bible. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the one that, that comes to mind right away that I, I think is, and I say uh, cool is, is Jonah and the whale, right? Yeah. It's Jonah and the whale uh, because he, Jonah gets this call from God to go and, and preach to the people of Nineveh so that they will turn their lives around. And and Jonah was, Jonah's kind of like, I'm not doing that. Right. So he gets on a boat and uh, this big storm comes up and all the people are like, hey, somebody is causing this storm. <laughs> somebody, somebody's at fault. Yeah. So they draw straws and the short straw falls on Jonah. So they're like, what did you do? And he's like, well, I'm running from God. And so he's like, he volunteers. It's like the Hunger Games. I volunteer as tribute. He's like, throw me overboard, right? Yeah. So he gets thrown overboard, and he gets swallowed by a whale. Or a large fish. Or a large fish. The Leviathan is some scriptures, some some versions of the Bible say. Uh, but the, the Bible is full of That's cool to you? Yeah, I think that's cool. You don't think that's cool? I think so, the better part of that story is when the fish threw him up and he came out <laughs> alive to tell about it <laughs> after being inside of the whale or fish right. belly for three days. My yeah. gosh. So mm, He must have smelled pretty bad, too. <laughs> well, you know what? Sometimes when we've been inside of stuff or been in things that are terrible, we might not come out smelling so good. But that doesn't mean that we still don't have a purpose. And right. that's what that story mm -hmm. teaches us. And that probably goes to this next question that, that oh, you I'm got I'm going to ask you. Yes, okay. it goes to the next question that I want to ask you, which is, what's the main message of the Bible? I know this answer might vary depending on who you're asking, but what is the main message of the Bible for me? It is a message of love. From beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation, it is nothing but a love story of God chasing humanity to express God's love to humans, teaching us how to love God, how to love one another, and how to love ourselves. And so for me, that's really the essence of it. And um, I understand that there are some, some parts of the, the scriptures that may not seem loving, but when you look at scriptures through the lens of love, and I feel like we talked about this before, um, 
you, you, you'll come away with this, this observation or this acknowledgement of that's really what God's intent is, mm-hmm. is to prove God's love to us. So speaking of love, we're mm-hmm. going to switch gears here a little bit. Okay. Um, so we have a, a question here uh, that oh. someone sent. I, I had a relationship that didn't work out. Uh, this is somebody else's question? Yeah. Somebody asking for a friend? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah, asking for a friend. <laughs> had a relationship. That, I know someone whose relationship didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and But they, they want, said they wanted to remain friends, so they're leaving the door open. Should I hold out hope that... Uh, that think that we might get back together again. Look, I don't know who sent this in, but here's my thought on this. So if it's a little too um, harsh for you, uh, then charge it to my head and not my heart. I really want you to know that I care for you. But if someone ends a relationship with you, they break it, they break it off with you. We cannot be in a relationship together, right? But then they say, but can we still be friends? That sounds like to me like a carnival consolation prize. That doesn't sound like you really want to still be friends with me, right? So, I, I, number one. Number two, if your motivation to be friends with that person is so that you hopefully can be, come back as their partner, I, I say you need to move on, sugar. You, you really do. You need to move on. Uh, I know it may be painful. I know it may be tough. I know it may be hard. But the reality is, if they are now your ex, they are an ex for a reason. Either they are or you are. So I think the better question is to evaluate what do I need to learn about myself at this moment to help me to move forward into the next relationship that I go into? Um, That's the better question versus lamenting or worrying or wondering about or pining away and hoping to return back to the one that you left, right? Or who left you, right? That's what happened? Okay, and so if that's your scenario, hear me well. And I'm going to read you a scripture that I think applies to that kind of relationship. It applies to an addiction. It applies to to anything that has been uh, hurtful or harmful to you that you have this tendency or desire to want to go back to it. So here's what the scripture says in Proverbs in the Old Testament, uh, chapter 26, verse 11. It says this, as a dog returns to its vomit, So fools repeat their mistakes. Do you see a person wise in their own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for them. Verse 11 is the part that really got me, Gary, whenever I first read this. I've shared it with our congregation before. But I think about this now often when I'm about to make a mistake that I've already made before. It is like literally watching your dog throw up. The dog is sick from something. They vomit it, and then they go and start licking it up. How gross is that? I, and I'm, it says dog, but you, you have a cat. You can be a cat. But imagine a human being doing the same thing. That's the imagery that this is saying. That's the analogy of us returning back to the things that hurt us or caused harm to us. Again, if the person is an ex, let them be an ex, and you keep it moving. I believe that. God will always have something better in store. God will always have a better job, a better boo, a better whatever it is. I promise you the best is yet to come. So don't give up hope on just one person who has clearly moved on. Um, You can choose to be friends or not be friends with that person. There's this thing called Facebook. You can make a whole bunch of friends. So I don't, you know, know if just putting all your efforts into that one friendship, if it's not really a healthy friendship, is the best thing to do. Well, let's, uh, let's, we got one more question okay. here. So, uh, a number of people at Lyft and, and just in the world, you know, uh, have lost jobs as part of this COVID uh, shutdown that we've experienced. Um, so, a couple, kind of a two-parter here, but how can I discern what God's will is for me as I'm, uh, you know, leaving one job uh, without a clear prospects for a new job? And then secondly, you know, how do I maintain my mental health in during this time of self-isolation, mm-hmm. sheltering in place, and possibly not having a job? So how do I know the will of God for my life when I've lost my job, right? 
That's the question. That's the first part of that question. I, I would say that the will of God for your life, did you know that before the job ended? Because God's will isn't just changing just because some employer can no longer employ you. Um, just because that job can't employ you doesn't mean someone else can't. I believe that God's will is still for you to be happy and whole in employment that will nurture you and provide for you and your family. So I, I do believe that it is important for us if you've lost jobs or um, wages or any kind of situation that's caused you to have a, a, de a deficit in your life, still continue to lean into what God's will is. And here's what God's will is. Now, it is different for everyone, but here's what God says overarching for all of us. Jeremiah 29, 11, we talked about this a few weeks ago. God says, I know the plans that I have for you. And they are plans for good, plans to prosper you, plans that will not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God knows the plan. So even if that employer can't get on board with what the plans are, <laughs> somebody else will. So my faith is in God, not in that job. My hope is in God, not in the job. That's the will that we, 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 we seek after is God's will. And God's will, like I just said, I've said before, when we talked about relationships, God will have a new boo, God will have a new job. God can provide something new for you um, in the midst of something old that has had to go away. So don't lose hope just because the opportunity is ended. Now, I also want to acknowledge that it can be scary. It can be unsettling. But that's, again, where we continue to lean in and to trust God even more. We trusted God when God was providing through that job, right? We knew, we knew God was on board in our lives then. How much more is God now on board for us, right? So God isn't turning away just because something has happened uh, that was beyond your control. Uh, and I do think it's important during this time period of COVID to stay uh as well as possible, and by whole, well, I mean whole, um, spiritually, physically, mentally. Um, if you're struggling with the mental illness, uh, it is. It, this is not the time to not deal with that. This is the time to to really get the help that's needed, whether that's calling the church to to get uh, suggestions or calling your doctor. It's still important that you do so. Um, whether that means spending some time to meditate or to pray. Maybe it means getting up and going for a walk. I know my lifestyle has changed considerably during this season um, of COVID um, because I wasn't sleeping enough, but I'm able to sleep now to actually get uh, good sleep, and that makes a world of difference. So I, I just suggest to people that they continue to to create whatever elements of normalcy that they can in their homes even though everything around us may not seem normal we still need to focus on what we can do to ensure that we're growing and still uh, looking at this as a change of perspective seeing this as an opportunity for 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 good for our lives even though there's so many terrible things that have happened because of it well, I just want to, I really enjoy being able to talk about some of these, these um, questions y'all had, and I know there's lots of others, but these were just a few that we picked out today. And um, if you still have some unanswered questions or some thoughts about uh, God's will for your life or, or how you can grow in your faith, then I invite you to please reach out because we do want to walk with you and shepherd you along as you continue to grow in your faith and grow in being the version of who God has called you to be. May God continue to bless you. Let's pray. You want to pray, pray? Yeah, sure. you pray. All right. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of uh, scripture and how you inform us and how uh, we can live our lives uh, to be the best that you created us to be. Uh, we are created in your good and holy and pleasing and, and image of love. And we want to be that in the world. Uh, we thank you for the gift of your spirit that makes that possible. Uh, continue to move in us. And we uh, just pray a blessing upon every person that hears these words that they might go forward and be your love in the world. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
had an opportunity to be a part of our discussion today and our worship experience. And, and I hope that uh, perhaps a question that we discussed was helpful for you, or, or maybe it's inspired you to think about some questions that you have about faith or about God that you have answers to because of today, or maybe that you want to know more about. And if that's true, then we invite you to reach out to us because we love to shepherd you as you continue to journey in your walk with God. I'm grateful for this chance to be able to worship together. I look forward to when we can come together again. But know that all that we're doing in ministry is helping to lift up God and lift up others. If you'd like to contribute and to donate, please feel free to go to our website or to give online or to text in your gift or to mail in your donation. But you should know that we are grateful and honored for the chance to serve you and to serve others. So as you go throughout this week, know this, God loves you and I love you and there is nothing you can do about it. We'll see you next Sunday. Go in peace.